Now, the second thing I want to talk about based on various queries, various uh, uh, interaction I am having over the forum is that project life cycle. And what is project life cycle and how, how it relate to the phases. Now, life cycle we can uh, visualize as, as, as something which binds the starting and ending of the project. A project goes through multiple phases. When we use the word phase, means it has some strategic goal, uh, some intense one type of activity, which which get performed during that period of time. And such kind of 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 stages the project goes through, and find uh, at the end it gets delivered or it gets it's finished. Now, these stages, and are called project life cycle. So. The collection of these stages, rather than these stages, collection of these stages, which we call phases, makes the project life cycle. And the important point we should keep in mind is project life cycle is not equals to process groups. Now, many times uh, I find PMP participants getting confused between a project life cycle means initiating, planning, executing, monitoring and control and closing. So these things are process groups. They are not life cycle. The project life cycle would be a unique for given domain. The construction, pro the construction project will go through different stages before it gets delivered. The software development project will go through a different stages before it gets uh, uh, live. And, and those stages makes the project life cycle. During those stages, we may have activities, processes, which help us in doing planning, which help us in doing executing, monitoring, uh, and, and finally uh, closing, these collections are called process groups. So if I take an example of software development, maybe initially we go through a requirement, if you are following a, a productive life cycle in a software development, initially we, we may get into the details of the requirement. So it's a phase where we are uh, like find this particular phase is, we go through executing because we really do that work. We do keep monitoring and control this particular collection of activities. And finally, we end up closing this particular phase. So each, all the five process groups played a role even in a given phase. And then when we go from a second stage where we start uh, 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 designing the solution, again, all these stages will, uh, all these process group processes will come into the picture. So my, my recommendation and, and my reminder to all of the PMP participants are, is that don't get confused between project life cycle and process groups. They are different. Uh, the another confusion which I see uh, related to the process groups in, in, in PMP test takers is that when we think of a planning process group, we think that it, it has to happen in the initial stage of the project. The answer is no. The planning is a continuous uh, activity. So uh, it's like if you're starting a project on a month one and the project is getting finished on month 12, even in a month 11 and month 12, you are doing some set of, of replying. You are doing some set of adjustment in your planning. So the, the continuous planning is, is a reality of our uh, uh, project management now. Uh, now, depending of a life cycle, the intensity of planning may varies from initial towards the end. If you are following a predictive life cycle, means we want to tell that how the whole project will get executed, the initial months will have intensive planning because we are following predictive life cycle. If you are following adaptive life cycle, the planning will be more evenly distributed throughout the project life cycle. But whichever life cycle we use, the planning process group is 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 in action till very late in project uh, uh, life cycle. Similarly, executing, similarly initiating, similarly closing, and similarly monitoring and control. Now, initiating and closing, you may find that okay, project should just get started with initiating, and finally the project should get finished with with, with the closer one. Uh, but inside the project, we spoke about that we go through multiple phases. Each phase needs to be initiated and each phase needs to be closed. Uh, so we compile lesson learned from one phase and then we go to a phase phase two. So if we are running a 12-month project and if, if, if it goes through multiple phases, say five phases, 
all these phases will have initiating uh, uh, processes and closing processes uh, continuously. Uh, a simple thing that whenever you get into a new phase, you at least need to identify new stakeholders. Uh, people who are uh, uh, helping us in, uh, uh, in doing requirement related initiating activities, like people who help us in, in, in telling us requirement, uh, which is a phase one, when I go to a design phase, I may need different set of people. The requirement guys are not needed now. So I identify stakeholders. And when I'm identifying stakeholders, I'm doing initiating. So even I'm at the third month of a project, but I am executing initiate, initiating process group processes uh, uh, called identify stakeholders. So this thing you should keep in mind because many times when we take an exam, uh, uh, we start thinking that process groups are just serial. Whereas Pimbok even gives you a diagram where it shows that how typically efforts are distributed throughout the project life cycle. But I find many test taker doing that mistake. So this is something I wanted to talk about uh, uh, from initial uh, one, two, and, and three uh, uh, lessons.